The first Patonk players carved their balls from wood, but by the late 1800s, players hammered in nails to make their balls heftier and less likely to crack when hitting other balls. Then came brass balls, and later, the hollow steel ones used today. Manufacturing begins with long bars of carbon or stainless steel about 40 millimeters in diameter. This is stainless steel, which is cut into pieces about 45 millimeters long. The pieces are then placed on a conveyor that takes them to an induction furnace. It heats them to between 900 and 1200 degrees Celsius, softening the steel. As soon as the piece comes out of the furnace, the forging press strikes it three times. First, flattening it into a disc. Next, thinning the disc. And finally, stamping the disc into a half sphere. Next, the forged half sphere is milled on a lathe to refine its shape and create a groove. This groove will later be filled with metal when the half is welded to another half to form a ball. The milled halves are dropped down two separate chutes to an automated welding machine. The machine then clamps two half spheres together before welding them to each other. A robot removes the ball from the welding machine and transfers it to a computer-guided milling machine. As the machine's lathe spins the ball, a bit shaves off thin layers of steel to smooth the ball, leaving the weld invisible. It also makes the ball to within a specific diameter and weight range in accordance with international rules governing the sport. The machine also engraves a pattern to help identify whose balls are whose. International patonk rules require that the ball has four details engraved into its surface. The brand name, the pattern name, the weight of the ball, and a serial number for the set to which it belongs. Once the brand, pattern and weight are engraved, the balls move along a conveyor to the tempering station. Cutting, heating, forging and machining steel makes it brittle and weak. Tempering is the process of hardening it to restore its strength. After heating the ball to between 800 and 1000 degrees Celsius, it's immediately cooled in water that's just 40 degrees Celsius, a process known as quenching. After tempering the steel, the ball is polished with an automated sander. The finished balls vary slightly, so this last automated machine weighs each one, sorting them into rows of identical weight. Equal weight balls are then grouped in sets of three and are then engraved with the same serial number. These patonk balls are made from carbon steel. To prevent oxidation and corrosion, the factory electroplates its carbon steel balls with a protective layer of chromium. It submerges the balls in a series of chemical baths and water baths to prepare the surface for the final dip into an electroplating tank. In this final tank, an electric current draws chromium particles through the water and deposits them onto the ball surface. The chromium treatment leaves a white film, which is brushed away to restore the shiny finish. International rules require balls to be 70.5 to 80 millimeters in diameter and weigh between 650 and 800 grams. But how to play? The idea is to toss your balls as close as possible to the target ball while knocking your opponent's balls away from it and your feet must remain planted inside a small circle while you throw. You can play patonk indoors in a venue known as a boulodrome or a bull bar or you can play outdoors anywhere there's a patch of relatively flat ground. So, game on. I'm sure you'll have a ball or a bull.